Yo, what is going on guys? Horcrux here and welcome to the channel. So today we're going to be using some math. I know, don't click away, please do not click away. I'm going to explain everything with pictures. You know, I know you guys like pictures instead of numbers and jargon and yada yada. So get your number two pencils ready, get your erasers ready because we're about to dive in to the age old question. Does mitigation stack or is there diminishing returns? So we're going to answer that in this video. You can probably already tell by the thumbnail and also the video title what the verdict is but i'm gonna show you guys how i got there so uh, before we get into all that though a huge shout out to my patrons and also my community members thank you guys so much for supporting me and the channel i honestly could not be doing this without you guys you've made it possible for me to make this into a full-time job so um thank you all so much and i my heart goes out to you really i appreciate it I'm also doing PvP Top 5, submit your clips to the Discord channel, link down in the description, or to Horcrux at ESO at Yahoo.com. And don't forget guys, I also have a Patreon if you want to help support the channel even further by becoming a community member. You can do that on the homepage, you get emojis and Discord channels, and you know, some small perks here and there. Anyway, uh, enough selling myself. So, what are we talking about guys? So, there's gonna be a comment floating uh, somewhere on the screen here. I usually, every, every time I post a build video, I usually get a comment like this. Every time I make the mistake and use the phrase, um, stacking mitigation, oh, or I do add it to mitigation, like stacking iron blood with major protection, minor protection, yada yada. I use those terms very loosely and people take it to heart and they say, hey, Horcrux, um, this is all, you know, there's diminishing return on the returns on this. You're not actually getting the mitigation that you claim you are. Well, um, there's no post on this on Reddit. ESO can neither confirm nor deny this, Zenimax, or whatever you want to refer to them as. There's really nothing besides Reddit, but um, I did my own testing. I did what I do best. I'm an engineer. I like to do tests. I like trial and error stuff, right? So um, that's kind of what I do. And I'm tired of people telling me and leading people on with misinformation about how mechanics work in ESO. So let me preface this by saying anything that is additive is very, very bad for balancing reasons. If something is additive, that's like 30% mitigation plus 15% mitigation. There's no diminishing returns on that. There's no curve saying like, hey, for every point of mitigation, you only get like 97% of that or 93% of that, you know, etc. Um, so making things additive is very exploitable. That's why we can use the Ash Cloud in the DK kit that costs mana per second. Um, you can toss on cost reductions that reduce the mana cost down to zero, which is um, very unintended, I believe. It's just a cute trick that you could do. Not too broken, but what does get broken is when you start looking at survivability and how you can best maximize your efficiencies at living in serial because basically in pvp if you live and do damage eventually people's gonna die i mean that, that's kind of the name of the game like one third of the entire formula to serial is survivability there's survivability damage and sustain so if you're able to exploit one of those which i do in most of my videos by rocking iron blood that's why i rock iron blood is because it's so stat dense and so stat heavy it's broken as crap guys it honest to god is it's the most it, it's the strongest five piece in the entire game by far and i'm going to explain to you in this video how we do that so um let me get a few things out of the way because i know there's gonna be people pick apart this video again i'm gonna keep it very quick and simple i'm gonna show you guys a graph of my findings so what i did i removed all of my champion points from my DK. I have my buddy Jonathan. Um, he removed any kind of procs or anything like that. So um, what we're left with is him just hitting me with straight damage, just a straight whip. That's it. Uh, no lie attacks, no, no special influences. Um, his stats are noted. Um, my stats are noted as well. I did not change sets. I did not change bars. Nothing was out of the ordinary. The only thing I did was start at 0% mitigation, 5%, 10%, 15%, 30%, 35 40 and 45 percent intervals now i did these intervals because it's the easiest to attain now you could push this even higher with the undeath passive which should go up to 30 percent which is sus because there's not a threshold that exactly gives you those numbers so i left that out of the equation also you can run swift which will give you another 10 percent mitigation which i did not include because that re would require me changing up sets um and i don't want to 
mess around with changing sets while I'm trying to get these mitigation values at a standard to where they're repeatable. So to avoid that confusion, I did not use Swift at all. Um, I use Ironblood because Ironblood gives you the most mitigation. And you would think from a mathematical standpoint, if you get 30% mitigation, you're going to see the changes from 30% mitigation much more or much higher than a 10% mitigation from Swift, for example. Um, the only other source of mitigation that I can think you could possibly get other than minor major protection, which we do cover in this video as well, um, is the ghost from the Necromancer skill line. So you can say, Horcrux, why didn't you do it um, on the Necromancer? Well, oh, I don't have the Sigil Order skill line unlocked for that, so there's no hopes of me getting minor protection. Um, from the undo passive. So DK is the most consistent. I repeated these results three times just to make sure they was accurate and correct. And um, here's my finding guys. So there may be a cutaway section here. There may be some graphs up on the screen. There may be some background footage of me for like the past hour testing out all these damage numbers. So here's what I found. So uh, let me explain this graph here. So if there are diminishing returns, you would expect to see a curve. Now, um, the variables on zero mitigation, 5% mitigation, 10 and 15 is uh, pretty much a line, uh, which is linear, which means it's a one to one ratio, which means you have zero uh, diminishing returns. Now, you will see that there is a drop from 15% to 30% because I can't really figure out a way to get those numbers in between 15% and 30% repeatably. So you're going to see a drastic drop off there. Well, you go like, oh, Horcrux, there's your curve. No, that's not true because technically there should be a one, two, uh, there should be two more. Yeah, there should be two more um, plot points in between uh, the 15% and the 30%. So what you're seeing is a jump from 15 to 30. You're not seeing the progression at 20 and at 25. So that's why you see that drop. And again, for 35, 40, and 45. So um, I'll leave the graph up here on the screen um, you guys can follow along take a screenshot zoom in i'll try to zoom in as much as possible but essentially the moral of the story is that at zero percent mitigation um jugs here is hitting me with a whip that does 2965 um the end result at 45 percent mitigation this is with iron blood proc this is with major protection and also minor protection you notice at 45 percent um supposed damage mitigation right supposed um he's doing 1542 well if you do the math um as you can see here you just do one minus the uh partial total uh, partial amount uh, divided by the total amount of mitigation that you would expect to have and that comes out to 0.45 actually comes out to 0.449 but it's it's essentially 0.45 and that shows me guys that it is a complete linear line from zero percent mitigation to 45 percent mitigation so any forms of mitigation you have from 45 percent down to zero is completely additive now again i was not able to test this with the undeath passive because you have to you do vampirism stage three plus whip's going to do more yes horcrux i should have done this on a sorcerer i know um but i would assume that beyond 45 percent mitigation this curve just continues on um you could potentially get this up to i think it was 95 percent we dialed this in that so theoretically you could have um iron blood 30 percent minor major protection will put you at 45 percent okay so there's 45 percent on a necro you have the ghost that gives you another 10 percent we're at 55 percent fellas so from the 55%, you could add the undeath passive, which will put you at 85%, okay? And then if we toss on the swift set, that could be 95% mitigation if this curve continues. Now, if you guys want to run your test and test this beyond 45%, which is, I think, very viable, very practical, then by all means, let me see an Excel sheet. Um, I will be happy to feature in a future video or you know something to that extent, you know, kind of explaining, hey, after, I don't know, 55%, it starts to drop off. Guys, up to 45%, it's completely additive. I'm just gonna go ahead and guess that there's no soft or hard cap to stacking mitigation. And if you guys have information otherwise, please let me know down in the comments or a link or uh, something of that sort, and I will respond to you, drop in the Discord, something like that. But um, for my findings, guys, it's 100% uh, additive. You guys can go back and check the math yourself if you want to. Uh, you nerds out there like the fact check the stuff. That's cool. Um, but yeah, so 
all the mis misinformation put out there is uh, not cool. Um, I want to kind of start doing this, really dissecting the game. This game has been out for seven years, and people just don't know this fact. Like, you ask anyone, is mitigation, uh, is there diminishing returns on mitigation? Everyone will tell you, yes, there is. And then you ask them, how much? Oh, well, it's, uh, stop that. Stop, just stop. Here are the numbers, here are the facts. There is, is zero diminishing returns on stacking mitigation. It doesn't matter if it's a buff, it doesn't matter if it's just a flat mitigation. Now, I did not factor into this my uh, natural resistances. I think the natural resistances is multiplicative at one point. Once you get up to a soft cap of, I think, 40,000, something like that, 35, that mitigation is multiplicative. That is confirmed. But when it comes to flat damage mitigation, such as minor major protection and sets that give you just a flat amount, um, it's additive. And uh, yeah, that's that. Really hope you like this video, guys. Um, I kind of nerded out on this one. And yes, the Excel sheet doesn't look uh, too fancy, but uh, it gets the job done. It illustrates my point. Um, if you guys like these types of videos, um, please let me know down in the comments whether you want to see more stuff like this I can break apart and possibly present more ideas to me down in the comments as well. Maybe I can investigate some issues you guys are having or some misconceptions, kind of like an ESO Mythbusters type of thing. So I think that'd be pretty cool if you guys would be up for that. Um, again, thank you patrons, community members, and the best way to support the channel, guys, if you don't have the funds. Y'all know holidays coming up. That's awesome. I just want you to watch the content. Only like if you actually like the content and, of course, subscribe. That's the best way to help me in the channel and to inflate my ego, um, what little ego that I have left, right? So, uh, thank you guys for watching, and hopefully you have a great rest of your evening, and I will catch you guys in the next one. Peace.